Hey guys, welcome back to another Death Stranding video. Today we are finally going to talk about the conversation between Hideo Kojima and Jordan Vacht Roberts that took place at E3 this year. Now the conversation itself was not too interesting, they just talked about their favorite games and movies and their childhood and what influenced their career choices and things like that, pretty basic stuff. Unfortunately, there was absolutely no mention of little Annie Rooney or Norman Reedus during this conversation. So I guess that was just a mistake or maybe a red herring to throw us off track. But an interesting detail that I noticed during the interview was on the left arm of Jordan's jacket. You can clearly see three patches that resemble flags from around the world. The first flag, quite obviously, is the American flag, the second flag is the Japanese flag, and the third flag I didn't get at first, but with Trent's help, we discovered it was actually the South African flag. And okay, that seems pretty simple, three flags, but why would he have those specific flags on his jacket to begin with? Well, I believe the flags don't just represent countries, but more specifically, people from those countries. If you look just beneath the surface, it becomes quite apparent that the American flag represents Jordan Vacht Roberts, the Japanese flag represents, obviously, Hideo Kojima, but who does the South African flag represent? All it took was a quick Google search of South African film directors before we found Mr. Neil Blomkamp himself. Now if you don't recognize the name, perhaps you will recognize some of the movies he's directed. And coincidentally enough, Neil had an interview at E3 this year as well in the Coliseum, the very same place where Jordan had his conversation with Mr. Kojima. Now Neil's interview was very interesting. He spoke with Jeff Keighley about some very cool things that he is doing. He's been working on a new project for quite a while now called Oats Studios. And the purpose of Oats Studios is extremely unique. Think of it like this, instead of a developer making something with raw assets and then selling you the final product, the purpose of Oats Studios is to make a bunch of raw assets, put those assets together in a preview, show the preview to you, and if you enjoy what you see, you can then download the raw assets and use that to make whatever you like. So instead of selling you a final product, they're selling you the tools to make your own final product. It's very cool, I'm really excited to see where it goes. I'm probably going to try it out myself, even though I don't think I'll be very good at it. It's very interesting, and I'm really glad he's doing this, because this will allow aspiring film directors and game developers to practice their skills and have the creative freedom to make whatever little fan projects they want without having to worry about massive amounts of funding or approval from shareholders or people who don't even make games or movies to begin with. This is going to be great for small-time people who really want to make high production value content without having to get on board with a team or make a project that someone else wants you to do. I think I'm really going to end up liking this, but that doesn't really have any connection to Death Stranding. Towards the beginning of the interview, they were discussing video games that had influenced Neil's directing career. I'm just going to let him speak for himself on this one. You've done a lot of, you know, big budget Hollywood films. Right. Many of them have, you know, been inspired in some ways by the video game world, right. and I assume you're... Do you play games, love games, right? Uh, I do, I do, and I come out of uh, I come out of 3D graphics and, yeah. and visual effects, and so I find, you know, three-dimensional uh, environments, virtual environments, are like incredibly interesting to me for whatever reason. I just love them. Yeah. Um, we're one of the Oats pieces that we're doing right now at the moment. Actually, is an entirely computer-generated piece that's being uh, rendered in real time in Unity. You know, oh, and cool. so that's that'll come out later in the year, but. Um, a lot of a lot of the the sort of I think the thing that draws me to games is the fact that uh, I used to make three dimensional environments. I love three D environments. I love the fact that you can drop the viewer into it. You can start including sound design and create sort of emotions and stuff. And I, that, I think that's the primary reason. So I think that I play games just to touch that more than to you know get into like an everlasting sort of combat with somebody else if right. that makes sense except unless it's at Oats studios on friday when csgo is happening <laughs> have there been games over the years that have particularly inspired you yeah for sure i mean uh half-life and and half-life 2 i mean the exosuit at the end of district 9 is basically just half-life weapons yeah. um he actually doesn't have a rebar gun which i suppose could be included but you know a pig flinging anti-gravity gun is a, is a good move yeah um that was a big. That was a big deal for me. Uh, games like um, Battlefield and just being in an environment where 
you know, living in the 21st century where that many players can be linked together all bringing down an enemy is amazing. Um, weird indie games like Fez, stuff like that, okay. I, for some reason have, that felt like some weird alternate reality to me that I really loved, and maybe in the soundtrack. Um, I'm trying to think, like going back, you know, uh, Metal Gear on uh, PlayStation in 1998 was a really? huge deal for me, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that was weird. I was telling, I told Hideo that today. I moved to Canada at the point that that came out from South Africa, and it's like, you know, if you have a big event in your life like that, there's things that sort of are lodged in, sort of into your psyche. That, and yeah, I feel like that game was like that for me. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. That's the link, the original Metal Gear. As we all know, Kojima is the one who produced Metal Gear. Jordan Vacht Roberts is a huge fan of the game and is actually making a movie based on the game itself. And Neil Blomkamp admits that the game has influenced some of his choices as a film director. It's also worth noting that Neil actually spoke to Kojima before coming out on stage at E3. So it's possible that these three guys are all actually in cahoots with each other. I also believe it's possible that the patches on Jordan's jacket could represent a partnership between all three of these individuals. The American flag and the Japanese flag could represent the partnership between Kojima and Jordan, based on the fact that Jordan is making a Metal Gear movie and is probably consulting Kojima for small details or plot and things like that. We know that Neil Blomkamp has used Metal Gear Solid as inspiration for some of the movies he's made, and now it makes a little more sense as to why Jordan would pick those three specific flags for his jacket. It is possible that these three are all in some kind of a partnership of some sort. And on a final note, something that really stuck out to me was at the end of the conversation, they showed off a preview of Raqqa. Now Raqqa is of course a preview of the raw assets being developed by Oat Studios, and this is just one of the many raw asset sets that they're going to develop. These previews aren't movies or trailers or video games in and of themselves, they're just windows into the raw assets that they're making so that you can get an idea of how these assets can be put together and used. During this preview, we saw alien lifeforms with this weird black ooze. Now this might just be me, but the black ooze seems eerily similar to the oil seen in Death Stranding. Not to mention, when this ooze is placed inside of a human, he becomes a sort of parasite or agent for for the alien life forms. This could possibly be a reference to stranding as a mechanic, similarly to how Mads Mikkelsen controls the skeletons through his strands. Holy shit, now that I think about it, if you put Kojima in Mads Mikkelsen's position in this scene of the trailer, and we just do a little Photoshop magic right here, now that creates some interesting speculation indeed. In reality, I really don't think these two things are connected at all. I don't think that Raqqa is in any way related to Death Stranding, except that it might be a hint towards Neil's interaction or potential partnership with Kojima and Jordan. Just some food for thought, but tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like, and please consider supporting me on Patreon so we can avoid YouTube's horrible ad policies and I can keep making content for everyone to enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe for more Death Stranding content. Content. Have a great day guys, and I will see you all next time.